Hi guys, it's Mrs. Opal and Annika. And Annika, can you tell us what you're, we're going to learn about today? One sample Z test for P. There you go. All right. Thanks, Annika, for helping us out. We'll see you later. Okay, sweetie? Okay. Okay. All right, guys. We are going to add on to what we've been doing. So we've done the state. We have done the plan. And today we get to do the fun stuff, the do. Without any you know, further ado, let's go. Our problem we have today, any NBA fan has heard about the free throw shooting woes of the NBA's most dominant center. Over his NBA career, Shaq has made 53.5% of his free throws. One offseason, Shaq worked with an uh, assistant coach on his free throw technique. During the first two games of the season, Shaq made 26 out of 39 free throws. Do these results provide evidence that Shaq has significantly improved his free throw shooting? Step one, state, okay? We need our P, we need our HO, and we need our HA. I'm gonna talk about it, okay? And then I have it all written down for you and you can pause and write it down in your notes. So our no hypo or our P first, let's start with our parameter. The true proportion, what's the story going on? And the story going on is Shaq is either making free throws or not. What do we want him to do? We want to improve his free throw rate. So the true proportion of free throws that Shaq has made, that's our P. Our HO and our HA, they'll always have a P with them. The HO is our claim. Is there a current truth or a claim right now? Start there, and if we can't see that, then go to the evidence part. But in this case, there is a claim. Right now, the current truth is he makes 53.5% of his free throw shows, throws. Excuse me. Now, we need to change that to a decimal because it does have that unit as a percent right now. So we need to move that decimal back two to the left. So P right now is equal to 0.535. And we want to find evidence that he improved this, okay? So to find evidence for that, that means it's going to be greater than, right? So here we go. Our true proportion of free throws that Chuck has made, P equals 0.535. HAP has to be greater than 0.535. Okay, we want to run the significance test. We want to see if, hey, 26 out of 39 is that better? Did he do a lot better or not? And if he did do better, is that statistic right there, is that a significant statistic? So that's what we're doing right now. We're saying, did he do significantly better? Is he, is he in this place where his true proportion is now better than 0.535? Well, in order to do that, we have to meet our conditions. So we're going to go with that R, that I, and that N. Is there anything random about this? And if we go through and we read through, I don't see anything where it says randomness. So we're going to assume randomness. I is that independent, okay? That's the 10N you should have in your notes from before, which is less than capital N. Well, what is N? N is our sample size. So in this case, we have to figure out what is our sample size. Is it 26 or is it 39? And in this case, it's 39. Why? Well, because 26 is a part of that 39, okay? So he made 26 out of the 39 total. So we take that 10 times 39, which is less than all the free throws Shaq can make. Lastly, okay, is our N. We take our N times our P and our N times our 1 minus P, and that needs to be greater than or equal to 10. So our P in this case is 0.535. We always get it from that null hypothesis there. Our N we know is 39. So I took 39 times 0.535 is greater than or equal to 10. And 39 times 1 minus 0.535. And that's greater than or equal to 10. So now we have check, check, and check. We've met our conditions. And we are okay now to use a one sample Z test for P. This is the new stuff. Okay. First step, this is the do now. What I'm going to actually do is I'm going to cover up also these steps here. Okay, so our first step is to find our P hat. And what you need to know about your P hat is your P hat is your part divided by your total sample. Okay. 
So what do we know about our part divided by our total sample? So if we go back up and read, we see that right here that Shaq made 26 out of 39. He made part out of all of the shots that he made. So 26 divided by 39. That is our P hat. That's our statistic. That's describing the sample of 39. Okay, so that's right here. 26 divided by 39 is 0.667. Now, on the homework, I think it's important to note, and on the key, I round everything to two decimals, but I have this note, these notes really nicely filled out, so I'm going to keep it how it is. But on the homework, just when you're doing your homework, make sure that you take note that every calculation I do in the homework is with two decimal places, okay? Thank you for being flexible for the notes where I use three for the notes here, okay? Step one, we should feel comfortable with. Step two, we have to identify what the P is. That's an easy one. That's what the null hypothesis is. So if we go up to the null hypothesis, that P is 0.535. Okay, so I just mark that down again, 0.535. Step one, P hat. Step two, your P. Hopefully we feel okay. Step three, that's our standard deviation. Okay, so there is a formula for that. Let's see if I can write it down. Okay, we are going to take P times 1 minus P. We're then going to divide that by N. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of that whole thing. Okay, so that's our standard deviation of the distribution. So you can see I did that there. P times 1 minus P divided by 39, and then take the square root, and I get 0 0.08. It's really important, like, however you're typing this in your calculator or typing it accurately, I would follow those order of operations. I would do this numerator up here first, then divide by the denominator, and then take the square root of the whole thing to get 0 0.08 right there. We have our P hat, we have our P, we have our standard deviation. And now what we want to do is we want to find our Z. And our Z score is the same. I use ZOMS for people to remember. That's our observation minus our mean divided by our standard deviation. Okay, so when we're dealing with these types of problems, our observation in this case is always going to be P hat. Okay, so Z really is what we observed, that P hats. And then our mean is what we assume to be true right now, and that's our P divided by our standard deviation. So one thing that's nice, what I like about this setup here, step one, two, and three lead you very nicely to step four, right? I take step one, P hat, minus step two, hit enter, divide by step three, the standard deviation. So this is what I'm looking at right here. And you can see I did that right here. I took 0.667 minus 0.535. So step one minus step two divided by step three to get a z-score of 1.65. And now what I'm gonna do, if you still have your z-score chart, you're gonna go there. And if you don't, I have a link to this table in the folder. You're gonna go to, I think, what did we say? We said 1.65, yeah. I'm going to go to 1.65, so 1.6 is right here, 5 is right here, and I'm going to see where they intersect, and that's at 0.9505. Okay, and that's my fifth step. I have to go to the table. Now, here's the thing you need to remember, okay? We need to remember what type of problem is this, okay? And how we look at that is we have to look at our HA. So we went to our table and we got points 9505. So that's the first thing you need to know, right? That you should feel good about. Now what we wanna do, once we look at that table, we need to analyze, we look at our HA. If our HA is a less than problem, we get to stop. If it's a greater than problem, 
okay? We have to do one minus that p-value, whatever we got in the table. If it's a not equal to in the HA, then it's a little tricky, okay? I'm gonna write it down here and we're gonna practice it on the next problem, but I want you to have it all written down in one spot. If it's a not equal to, you wanna look at your z-score, okay? Um, if your z-score is negative, you take the p-value from the table and multiply it by two. Okay, so let me talk about that again. If my HA was a not equal to, I already went to the table. The fifth step is you go to that table first. Then you look at the HA. If it is, if your Z, if the HA is a not equal to, you then go and look at your Z score from step four. If it is negative, you're good to go. You take whatever the p-value is and you multiply by two. If your z-score is positive, you need to do one minus the p-value and then multiply by two. So in this case, if our ha was a not equal to, I went to the table, I analyzed my HA, I saw that it was a not equal to. I go to my z-score, it's a positive z-score. So I need to do one minus the p-value, hit enter and times by two. Now, if you're feeling overwhelmed, don't worry, I'm gonna do that with you. But because you might be feeling overwhelmed, let's just quickly back up. What have we done here in this step? We got our p-hat, our part over our total, shack me 26 out of 39. We got our P that comes from our HO. We got our standard deviation and that comes from this formula right here. We then went and found our Z score, which I gave you the formula for right here. Okay, and we went and did it right there. Okay, after you find your Z score, you go to step five, always you go to that table and find that P value. We did that right there. Then you need to look at your HA. So that's where we're at right now. Our HA is a greater than. Since our HA is a greater than, we're gonna go where we see greater than, and we need to do one minus that p-value. And that's one minus 0 0.9505, which is 0 0.0495. That's where we stop for today. What I wanna do is I wanna do one more problem that's a not equal to, so you're used to these steps right here, okay? People of taste are supposed to prefer fresh brewed coffee to the instant variety. On the other hand, perhaps many coffee drinkers just want their caffeine fix. A skeptic claims that only half of all coffee drinkers prefer fresh brewed coffee. A statistician takes 50 subjects and have them taste two unmarked cups of coffee, and the subject says which he or she prefers. One cup in each pair contains instant coffee, the other fresh brewed. We found that 36 of our 50 subjects chose the fresh coffee. Do we have evidence that the true proportion of all coffee drinkers who prefer fresh coffee is different than the skeptic? State, P, what's the story about? It's the true proportion of coffee drinkers who prefer fresh coffee. Right there in the question. Your HO, okay? HO, is there a claim? And there is a claim up here, okay? That only um, half of all coffee drinkers prefer fresh coffee. So that's where you would say P is equal to 0.5. Our HA then is what are we trying to find evidence for? And it doesn't say less than, it doesn't say greater than, it says different, okay? So we put a not equal to right there. Step one, state done. Plan is the conditions. And for today, because it's longer notes today, I'm gonna skip that part for you and go right to the do. Okay, so we have our steps right here. P hat, P, standard deviation, Z, and table. And then what do we do with that table? Okay, the P hat, that's your part over your total. So let's go up and let's look. Here's the total subjects. Here's the part of them that prefer fresh coffee. 
36 over 50 is 0 0.72. So right now we already have evidence that it is different than 50%. What we're looking for here, guys, eventually is, is the significant evidence, okay? Step two is the P. That's 0.5, where did we get that? That came from the null hypothesis. Step three is the standard deviation. That's the formula I gave you on this page right over here. P times one minus B divided by N and take the square root of that. Okay, so when I did that, I said 0.5 times one minus 0.5 divided by 50 to get 0 0.071. And again, thanks for being flexible on the homework. It's always rounded to the second decimal place here. I varied. All right, now we find our Z score and we know that our Z, we take step one minus step two divided by step three. 0.72 minus 0.5 divided by 0.071. Now I go to my table, 3.09. So to that Z score, 3.09, 3.0, and then nine, right? Oops, sorry guys, which is 0.999. Okay. Now, what do I do next? So let's actually cover up this. Let's go back to these directions I gave you. Let's copy them. Okay, we went to the table. We got the 0.999. Now, okay, we have to look at the HA. Is it a less than? We stop. Is it a greater than? We do one minus that. Or is it a not equal to? We have in the HA a not equal to. So what I have to do now, right, is I have to look at the Z score. If the Z score is negative, right, I take this P value and I multiply it by two. Our z-score is not negative. Our z-score is positive. So what do I have to do? I have to do one minus that p-value, and I get 0 0.001, and then I multiply it by 2 to get 0 0.002. All right, you guys. That's all I have for you guys today. It was a little longer. Forgive me. Um, but you're going to have a couple days. There will be no notes tomorrow. So tomorrow will be a work day over this. Um, and we only have two lessons left in this unit, so two more videos to watch of me doing this. So you guys have been great. Thanks for staying patient and being flexible. Have a wonderful day.